I want to talk to you a little bit about torting and filling a cake, but first I want to tell you why. My husband John and I were lucky enough to have our good friend Michelle Bomarito come and make our wedding cake for us. You can see it on this poster behind us. We blew it up and so that everybody could see the really good detail on it. I'm sure you know Michelle from Food Network Challenge. Anyhow, my husband was not so familiar with the cake world before that point. He's kind of a CPA by trade. So we saw this beautiful, glorious, highly detailed wedding cake and it never really dawned on him that the cake could be beautiful on the inside as well. So that was kind of an epiphany for us that we should express to our students and our customers that they should try to achieve that their cake on the inside is as beautiful to the palate as it is to the eye on the outside. So that's the reason we want to talk about torting and filling. So we'll go into a little detail about that now. The first step in torting a cake is making sure you're starting with a level cake on the top. We all have that little bit of cake on the top in the pan that domes a little bit. We want to make sure that's removed so it's completely level so that we have a nice professional edge. Now most people are familiar with using a, like a serrated bread knife, which is fine. I'm going to show you both methods today. Uh, most times when people use a bread knife, they end up with a not so level inside. Maybe you have like a higher end and a lower end and a little dip in the middle. So I'm going to show you a couple of methods to avoid that so you can have a nice even layer for each layer of cake. The first thing I want to show you is the Wilton Large Level R. I love the new design on this. It folds up so it doesn't endanger you when you're reaching for it in a, in a cabinet or a shelf. Uh, and it comes with a little cover so it keeps the blade protected. Uh, the fold is easily opened up and it locks into place. I'll show you this side. Slides over and locks into place. And the little feet here, you can see dial to higher levels or low levels, depending on what you're doing. So here we're going to be taking off the top of the cake, so I've got it on a little bit of a higher level. So all you do is lay it down next to the cake and you're going to saw. So this is how this works. And you can hold on to the handle here, back and forth motion, and the table, the level of the table is just going to guide you right through the cake. Just keep working your way through it. Don't force too much. Let the blade do the work. You don't have to push so hard. All right, so it goes right through and it's nice and level. And all you'll do is remove that top and it's nice and level straight across. Over here I'd like to show you how to go ahead and do the leveling with a serrated bread knife. You don't want a bread knife that's too deep in its serration because it's a little too aggressive and can tear at the cake. Just a nice shallow uh, serration is nice. So basically what we're going to do is avoid the problem spots. Where the problem spots happen, getting the dips, is in a little bit too much motion in your hand. So if you'll pretend like you're a robot and kind of lock your arm in so that you don't have any movement here, here, or this way, then what you can do is use a turntable to turn the cake into the knife. And you'll see I'm not moving my arm at all. It's the turntable that's doing the leveling. So it's going to be completely level all the way across. And then as you get around once, you can start pushing your knife in more towards the center, towards the center, and you're eventually going to get to the very center spot where it just glides all the way through. Now, the same way, we fold this back to throw away or use for cake pops or things later on, maybe trifle cake, and you see that we've got a completely level top from the serrated knife as well. This is one of the more important points that I want to stress about torting. It's fine if you have a layer of cake out of a pan and another layer of cake out of a pan and you put some icing in between, that's fine, but when you cut into it, you've just got one little stripe of filling or buttercream, and it's okay, but it's not so exciting. If you instead tort those layers, split them, then you can put multiple layers of buttercream and multiple layers of filling so that you have a really nice slice of cake for each guest. So what I've done here, I've taken my same Wilton cake leveler, and so I can split this layer that we already leveled from the top. I've lowered the foot so that it splits it halfway through. So all you do is the same action, splitting the cake, and you'll have nice even layers all the way across. The same back and forth motion, again, not pushing so much, but letting the knife do the work, letting the serration of the blade split the cake. Okay, and then all the way through, and we've got a nice even split layer of cake.
Now over here, I'm going to show you the same thing with the other technique that I showed you using the serrated blade. So again, locking that arm into place so you don't have any movement from the wrist or the elbow, you're just going to split with your eye the difference in the side of the cake right here. Keep this locked into place, give a little start, and then let the turntable do the action here. Just bring it across, turning, turning. Don't go too fast, you don't want to be too aggressive with it. On the corners you might want to give a little bit of a turn like this so it doesn't tear. Alright, so now we're all the way across, all the way around the cake once, and now it's going to be a little easier to turn, turn, and we're just slowly working a little bit at a time towards the middle, turning the cake into the knife, keeping it nice and level, and working our way towards the center. I can feel it's going through there. So, here's the hard part. A lot of people try to lift a cake and it splits. If you use a cake circle, sometimes it's too small. What I like to use is one of our one lip cookie sheets. It's nice and flat and it comes up to a 14 by 19 so you can do really, really big layers. But this is basically how you do it. If you just kind of lift that edge, you can slide your cookie sheet right in and lift that cake off so that you can fill the middle. So now that we've got a nice even split on our cake, let me talk to you about what we're going to put in the middle. First of all, you might have encountered a problem where you filled the cake and had some squishing out on the side. So I'm going to show you how to create a dam with buttercream icing to keep that from happening. But first let me talk to you about what's going to go in the middle. I really like multiple flavor profiles. Buttercream is fine. You can flavor it with so many different things. Over here I have an example of some Lorraine oils. Uh, just a few. There's such a great variety in, in this line of flavorings. And they're really, really concentrated, way more than extract. So I really love these flavors. Another great thing, and I'm going to put this in my filling today, is icing fruits. This comes in a lot of variety as well, but it's basically like concentrated fruit. So like, for instance, the orange, concentrated with the zest and the pulp of the fruit. So it has a really true fruit flavor, not that artificial taste. So what I'm going to use today is raspberry. What I'm putting it in is basically just heavy whipping cream that I whipped to a peak. I sweetened it with a little bit of powdered sugar. So I whipped about a quart of cream, about two tablespoons of confection of sugar, but you can have it sweeter or less sweet to your own taste. Now all I'm going to do, because whipped cream can tend to get a little bit soft and liquid, back to liquid form after you've whipped it, uh, I'm going to put a little bit of clear piping gel just right in the whipping cream to keep it stable. That way you can have it last for a day or two in the fridge without it getting too soft doesn't change the texture or the taste of the cream at all. So that's a really great tip to do that. Now what I'm going to do over here, as I said, I'm going to be using raspberry in mine today. So look how pretty that is. You can use this in fillings if it's pastry creams. You can put it in the cake batter and bake it. Look how pretty that is. And you can, again, use more or less to your taste. One time we put it in pancakes and it was just fantastic. So there's a, a multiple amount of uses for that. So just stir that in thoroughly, and then over here we're going to put an icing dam to make sure that this nice soft filling doesn't squish out from our sides. All I've done is load up a disposable pastry bag with a coupler, make sure you have no split in the coupler, and I've got a bag tie to keep it from squeezing out the side. So all I'm going to do is right along the edge, and this is a good firm buttercream, you don't want a soft one, it has to be stable. Just pipe a nice dam right along the edge. Right along the edge, all the way around the cake. And then just put your filling in. So the same height as the filling, not smaller, not higher. That nice raspberry whipped cream is going to be a nice, nice taste. Spread that to all the corners. Get nice and level. And the weight of the next layer of cake is going to flatten it down a little bit. I just want to make sure it's nice and evenly distributed. Every guest is going to get a nice luscious bite of this beautiful filling. Wait till they taste that. Yummy. I wish you could smell this. There we go. Okay, so the next layer of cake is going to flatten that surface out for us a little bit so we don't have to worry about it being too perfect. I went ahead and added another layer here. 
put in the filling. Let me go back and show you again how to do this. With the one lip cookie sheet that we have, I just slide in underneath the layer that I split and I can move this right onto the cake. Now how you get it back on there, see how I slide it about an inch off the board, off the cookie sheet? I'm just going to make sure I line up my edges and then hold this with my hand to keep it from pulling back with me and slide the cookie sheet right out from underneath the layer and it lays right in place. This is a really great way to do really large layers without them splitting on you. Here's another really great tip about getting your cakes really moist. If you're using a scratch cake mix, then you're probably coming across that problem a little bit more, your cakes being dry. A way to avoid that is an old chef's trick. Use simple syrup. It's basically equal parts of granulated sugar and water. Just bring it to a boil and then cool it. You can put it in a squeeze bottle. You can even add flavorings or liqueurs to it. Here I've added an almond flavoring, just a few drops right into the simple syrup. That's going to go really nicely with that raspberry filling. So all you want to do with the squeeze bottle, not really heavily, but just enough to give a nice flavor. Squeeze and give a little bit of moisture to this cake right on the layer there. And do each layer. Not too much that it's saturated, it's just right. Now I'm finishing up with my third layer of filling and I'll be able to put my final layer of cake on there. One thing that I want to say about which order to put the cake layers in. I don't like to cut into a slice of cake and see a crust. So you know that the bottom of this piece has a crust on it where it was touching the bottom of the pan. So let me show you a quick little flippy do trick you're going to love. So I'm going to take the same cookie sheet that I was using and I'm going to put it on top of here and then I'm going to flip it over and now you can see that crust where it was touching the pan. From here you know what to do. We're just going to go ahead and line that last layer up, make sure it's in place, hold it here, slide your cookie sheet out, and you've got a nice level cake. Now let me say this, no matter what method you're going to decorate with, if it's buttercream or fondant, you don't want a chance having what's called a blowout. It's basically those little air bubbles that are trapped in there that find their way out, pop out. So what I want you to do, give a little push on your cake. Your cake's not as delicate as you might think, but if you help it a little bit now by just giving a slight compression, it's going to help force those air bubbles out now rather than after you've decorated your cake.